Well, literally the day after I planted, we had a freak freeze, and I came out here this morning, I had left this valve open, and it was doing that, so it's been doing that for a day or so. That's great, forgot to shut that off, that's on me. Uh, I think that cap froze. And yeah, had a freak freeze, so uh, with any luck, the seedlings aren't dead, but they probably are. Um, let's see what the damage is. Liar leaf sage got nipped. Uh, New growth is melted. Most of the older growth seems to be fine. Coral bean is nuked. Um, this guy looks to have died of dehydration. That's the scarlet sage. Uh, hopefully that will come back out. Let's see. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a total freeze. Stems are alive, but all the new growth is dead. Uh, frost weed got nuked. Uh, those are tuberous, they should come back. Joe Pie's fine. Let's see. Swamp Sunflower took a bit of a hit, but it's mostly still good. Elliot's Aster is just fine. Swamp Milkweed took a bit of a nip, uh, but it seems to be fairly alright. Um, Chapula River Coreopsis is fine. Nero is fine. Golden Mane Coreopsis is fine. Canna's got nuked. Frog fruit took a hit. Gladiolus are iffy. That could just be because they're dry. Golden Alexander's fine. Blue Mistfire took a bit of a hit. Spiderwort's okay. Stokesia got nipped a bit. Same with the self heal. Looks like the obedient plant is fine. Rabbit tobacco is fine. Butterfly weed took some took a bit of a hit. Hopefully those turn back around. Blox is getting ready to bloom. It looks okay. Uh, Indian grass looks dry. And uh, yeah, let's check on the seedlings. I really hope they're alright. Luckily most of them hadn't come up yet. They're in these greenhouses, so they should be okay. Well, the Guatemalan indigo did not like it. The sickle pod got killed. Everything else looks to be mostly okay. All right, let's check this one. Oh, it's just fine. I think the Gyardia might have got a little bit nipped on the tips, but that's it. We're good. Okay, could have been a lot worse. Looks like it was this bed that got hit the hardest. Uh, Frostweed should come back. What are you? Oh, here's an obedient plant coming up in the frost weed. We'll just yank this guy out. Um, looks like this one got... Nope. Is that another obedient plant? We'll leave that obedient plant just in case that is the only thing that grows here. Uh, frost weed should come back from the roots. I'm not worried about that. Same with the coral bean. I think my scarlet sage might be... It? Well, no, no, I think it just got hardcore frozen. Well, not a real biggie. Um, just sets us back a couple of weeks as far as plant maturity goes. Hopefully everything recovers and we should be fine by the end of April, I hope, I pray. All right, so it's been a week or two and we're back out here assessing things. Very dry and it's supposed to stay dry for quite a bit does it every year uh, right after planting time it just decides not to rain for a month or two so we're at that period now uh, so not supposed to rain for another two weeks and everything is already dry right after you get your seeds in the ground that's how it works welcome Charleston um, so yeah looks like the tropical sage is just fine poking back on out coral bean is uh, putting out new growth looks like nothing uh, above the ground survived lard leaf sage looks not great. Uh, whatever that was is coming up. I don't remember what that was. Um, that was probably the indigo. That's also coming up. Don't remember what that was. Um, that was a lupine. That was the baptisia. So mm, the Carolina indigo, I think, maybe. They're coming up just fine. Um, got landsleaf coreopsis coming up right here on the uh, drip line, a little bit more over there. It seems to be. Uh, Water is the largest component in stuff not germinating because over here on the Black Eyed Susan, it's coming up all, all around the soaker hose. 
Frost weed's coming back out. Joe pie weed is just fine, putting out new leaves. Looks like all the sunflowers survived. Elliot's aster is doing great. Uh, so is the swamp milkweed. Can't kill yarrow. Um, river coreopsis looks a little bit wilty, uh, so it just needs some water. Uh, these guys are just fine, the golden mane coreopsis. Frog fruit took an absolute beating, which is really surprising to me because that stuff like grows on top of asphalt. So, uh, don't know what's up with it, but not doing the best. Let's see, cannas are poking back up. They just got nipped, they didn't actually really get burnt. Um, gladiolus are doing iffy. That's to be expected, they're a bulb plant, they're probably just gonna die back to the bulb and then come back up next year. Um, hibiscus isn't really doing much. Looks like it got burnt just a little bit. Um, Golden Alexander is wilty, it needs water. Uh, Miss Flower ain't doing so hot, needs water. Stochetia's fine, self heal looks a bit wilty. Um, Spiderwort even looks wilty. Um, the, uh, what you call it? Blazing Star is doing all right. I'm, looks like I miss some nut sedge. I hate this stuff. Grows everywhere, can't get rid of it. Can't even compost it. Oh, that was a spider wart. Yeah, it'll survive. Um, obedient plants, doing okay. Got sickle pod coming up, just a couple of them. In betwixt all the uh, Florida betony. Rabbit tobacco's doing just fine. Butterfly weed is surviving. Looks a bit wilty, but they are drought tolerant, so hopefully it'll do all right, and it's not some sort of like ornamental cultivar that needs a lot of babying. Phlox is doing just fine. Indian grass looks a bit weathered, but not worried. Doesn't look like we have any carrot coming up yet, and I don't see any Gaiardia coming up yet. This might be one. Yeah, I think that's one Gaiardia right there coming up. And we got a leak there because it looks like I cranked down too hard on the soaker hose and the hose clamp <laughs> cut a little bit. So easy fix. Just cut about three quarters of an inch off and reposition the hose clamp. Should be fine. But uh, that's the update for uh, middle of April. I tell you, it's been literally 24 hours like on the nose, Tw 24 hours and 30 minutes. And we already have nuts edge coming up and like not like a little of it. I, you can't get rid of this garbage. Anyway, fix that leak. Now we got another leak. I don't know what's causing this, but uh, I don't know. The soaker hose likes to just break apparently. So we're gonna fix that. No biggie, but annoying. I have a feeling that's going to become a reoccurring problem. All right, there's one load side row to hairy leaf cup. I think I got a couple more than I need, but that's, those should be, should do great. Just look at the tubers on the thing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bury them deep enough, but I think I got enough to at least get one. Uh, they took up a good bit of space. Okay, we're gonna shove these five in here and hope for the best. Uh, it's probably a little too crowded for them, but they'll get over it. They're a clumping plant. And uh, if not, we'll divide them and we'll have plenty to give away. Uh, I've got at least one more that I can stuff somewhere else where I think it's going to do well. I think I'm just going to put it in a pot for now and hold on to it. All right, those guys are in. They're already a little too dang big, but they, you saw the size of them tubers. Uh, I could whack them back and they'd come up just fine. So I'm going to leave them as is and hope that they just drop their leaves and then shoot back up from the stock. They don't need to be pretty. They just got to live. Um, this whole garden ain't going to be pretty the first year, I'll tell you that right now. Um, the second year is when it's going to come into its own. So we just got to keep it alive for now. Uh, substrate is still moist. It's nice and moist, about an inch below the surface. So we got plenty of water retention in here. It's just the top gets real dry and real crusty. Um, so it might be an issue with some of these seedlings. Um, but as long as I just come out here every day and run the irrigation for two hours, I think we'll be fine. Also, I'm taking these guys out because I don't got room for them anymore since I got the leaf cup. Uh, and uh, they're looking a little bit uh, moldy. Got a little bit of moss or algae or whatever scum growing on it. And uh, they're looking a little bit rotten, uh, a little too much uh, humidity. So we're gonna start hardening them off. We're just gonna let this uh, bake in the atmosphere. Luckily, it's a nice overcast day, so. Uh, but 
we got a while before we got rain. My plan is to let these guys grow uh, until um, we've got a nice uh, rainstorm coming, like a week of like soft rainy weather. And I'm just gonna pop them all in the garden real quick and then have it rain the next day. And uh, then they should be golden. But for the moment, I think we're just gonna let them air out and I'll just have to come by once once a day and just put some water on them just to make sure that they don't dry out. Uh, weather should be in the 60s this week, maybe in the next week, which should be great, uh, but it'll probably be 90 again now that I said that. They'll just waffle on me on the forecast. But anyway, leaf cups in. They're starting to harden off. Um, not really anything else coming out now. Uh, sickle pod, butterfly weed, Carolina, that one Carolina indigo, uh, Guatemalan indigo, uh, the red beckia and the landscape coreopsis. Then over here, same sort of deal. Um, except we got the gyardia over here, butterfly weed, sickle pod, lance leaf coreopsis, and uh, black eyed Susan. Everything else looks to be a no go, uh, which kind of sucks, but those are really the only things. Actually, I'm not depending on any of these, actually, other than maybe the gyardia. Um, we got everything else coming up in the Carolina indigo. Um, I cannot remember what I planted over here. I believe this is Carolina indigo. Whatever it is, it is coming up. Um, we shall see. That's Guatemala indigo, I'm pretty certain. And yeah, uh, if that is Carolina indigo, if that indeed is what that is, then that's great. Uh, but it could have been something else. I don't remember what I put there. Uh, pretty certain those are both indigo, though. So I don't think we're depending on any of these. So we're in, we're in a good place. It would be nice to get uh, some of the sickle pods, some of the gyardia uh, nice and up uh, so that I can plop them in and give them a head start. All right, we got plant labels in and I've got a new shiny brass cap for this guy so it doesn't leak anymore. And seedlings look to have not died hardening off, which is good. Just went and soaked the heck out of them. I haven't watered them in three days and they were bone dry. Uh, so I've now overwatered them so I can forget about them again. But it doesn't look like I lost anything due to the hardening. Um, however, we do have an interesting problem. If you notice with my butterfly weed, I don't have any butterfly weed. It's all gone. Except for that guy. He's still there. And I was afraid of this. Um, and the problem is, a certain little caterpillar has come in here and just eight all of them so we got monarchs we have monarchs already and <laughs> i was afraid we were going to have this problem um they have showed up since they overwinter here in charleston uh they have shown up and they have just eaten everything we still got this guy and we still got where was he this guy but he's got a little monarch on him and there's about <sighs> probably 10 caterpillars or more in here Looks like second instars, and uh, there ain't enough food for them. And this is an issue. Uh, I don't want to kill caterpillars, definitely not. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of a pollinator garden for butterflies. But uh, I don't have any more butterfly weed. Uh, they ate it all. I, this is all I could get, and it's already they've already killed almost all of it. Uh, I do have the swamp milkweed over there, so I think what I'm going to do is round up all of these guys, dump them over there, and hopefully they don't mind the... Uh, uh, palette change uh, and if they do it's their problem because I, I have nothing else to offer them uh, I was kind of thinking about getting a tropical milkweed like to put in a pot like over there just like leave it in the alley as sort of a bait plant so that I could put monarchs over there until the butterfly weed you know got large enough to live um, but looks like I missed that chance that monarch I saw in here when I just after I planted the butterfly weed came immediately back and laid eggs so that's great uh, well, anyway, I'm going to round up all of these guys and move them over that way. And we already have the oleander aphids as well, so that's great. Well, there we are. We got a dozen second instars, so let's go see if they like swamp milkweed a little bit better. Or, well, they don't got a choice. As you can see, the swamp milkweed is dealing with oleander aphids in mass already, so that's great. Um... We'll get some ICM going eventually. Uh, stuff will come out of the field and take care of these, but they're just, you know, a little bit vigorous at the moment. So I'm just going to take these guys and uh, just shake them off a little bit. Well, that 
worked better than expected. I'm just gonna give them a little tap, get them on there. And I think I lost one little fella down there. There he is. I'm just gonna plop him up there. And uh, hopefully they'll be much happier. Oh, they are going to town already. Yeah, that should hopefully work. All right, so just a quick status update now that we've moved caterpillars. Um, we have some Gyardia coming up, just a handful of them. They're poking up all around here. There's one right there. There's another one there. And there's one there, and I think I saw one right there. So we have Gyardia, and it also looks like we have American Wild Carrot. Just a handful of them. Um, not a lot, but they're coming up. Let's see. No mystery milkweeds that I've seen. As you saw, the butterfly weeds got smacked pretty hard by the caterpillars. Um, Phlox is blooming just fine. Uh, rabbit tobacco is doing great. I don't see any seeds coming up yet, though, for them. Uh, that's to be expected. Um, sickle pod is coming up. Um, not super vigorous, but they are there. Um, another one coming up over there. Let's see, obedient plant's doing fine. Self heal's doing fine. Stokisha's doing fine. Leatris is doing fine. And the spider work doing worse than anticipated, but still doing all right. Uh, Miss flower really does not like it. I think it wants to be a lot wetter. Same goes with the golden Alexander. Um, Gladiolus are perking up a bit. They're doing better than I thought. I thought they were going to die back to the roots. Hibiscus is starting to put out new growth after the frost. Cannas are back to being cannas. Nothing from the Thalia yet. Um, and uh, looks like two of the frog fruits still have green leaves on them, but this guy is just real crispy. So yeah, I'm hoping that the roots are still fine, but uh, what's above ground does not look good. Uh, Goldman Coreopsis is doing great. It's actually about to flower. That's nice. Um, Chipula River Coreopsis has perked up some. Yero's putting out a flower stalk. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, swamp milkweed is covered in aphids, and now it is covered in uh, monarchs, but it should be all right. Uh, Elliot's Aster is doing good, and the Buck Sunflowers are all doing great. They've all established their root systems, and they are taking off like wildfire. Let's see, Joe Pie Weed's doing good. It's coming around. Um, potentially a seed? Maybe not. Uh, all the hairy leaf cup, they, none of the um, above ground stalks uh, survived. Um, so I have just trimmed them all back to where they were uh, bent. I've cast them out here in the alleys. They'll be fine, they'll come back around, but it'll take a minute. Um, let's see, frost weeds doing good, they're all coming back around. Uh, still just uh, Black Eyed Susan around the soaker hose. Nothing seems to be coming up other than these uh, in the drier areas. Lanceleaf Coreopsis, same sort of deal, except more so associated with the soaker hose. Let's see, Guatemalan Indigo is doing great, at least I think that's what it is, I haven't bothered to check. Same goes with Carolina Indigo. Nothing from the false uh, Indigo or the Lupine. Coral Bean is suffering a bit. Same goes for the Lyre Leaf Sage. Uh, it did not like getting transplanted. May have some seeds coming up, like that. Not certain, uh, but not as many as anticipated. Uh, and the tropical sage, well, scarlet sage is coming out good. Yeah, see, there's the coral bean. Just is struggling. Yeah, it's the state of affairs. Um, no serious trauma other than what happened to the butterfly weed. Everything else seems to be doing great. Uh, well, and the frog fruit, but I'm not worried about them. I can always dig more of those up. Oh, it's, uh, it's April 19th, by the way. All right, it's the next day. Monarch caterpillars are nice and fat now. And it looks like we've got some integrated pest management going on. We got a ladybug over here eating our oleander aphids, so good. Hopefully we'll get some more of them here in the upcoming future. All right, and just like that, we got our bottom leader strung with some 17 gauge 
uh, galvanized electric fence wire and that should hopefully be rabbit proof or at least rabbit can only do it once a month or so because he'll destroy his teeth um, not trying to keep the rabbit out just want him to not chew on my damn fence rude thing so that's what we got going and uh, hopefully that should survive as well as uh, survive weed eater and uh, lawnmower encounters a lot better than the monofilament now uh, I'm gonna get to weeding all the beds because uh, someone cut the internet line to Edisto Island again so uh, don't have internet at the office so gotta find something to do so weeding's gooder gooder weeding's as good as anything okay we got one done yesterday we got two done just now only took me about 30 minutes and this is with stuff still being light. Still got three and four to go. Three looks like it's the heaviest on the nut's edge. Four looks like it's the heaviest on the blackberry. Look at that. The nut's edge is easy to pull. You just got to get it early. Once it starts getting this big, it starts putting out lateral runners, which you don't want because then you have to pull it all up again uh, whenever those runners, whenever the roots break and then they come back up. Uh, blackberry you got to let it get a little bit big like this so that you can really reach down in there and just break it off of the tuber down there get the whole shebang out otherwise you just pick the top off uh, betony sort of similar uh, it's better to get that larger like the blackberry so that you can grab it and rip the whole root out otherwise you just sort of pick the top off um, you'll never get the tuber out but uh, if you can get enough meat out of it um, you can kill the tuber off eventually and the uh, thing that's going to be the bane of my existence, I can tell already, is going to be this centipede grass. Because it just... Ooh, that one proved me wrong, but they just don't want to come out. They, they resist. Uh, they're really strong. They don't even want to break. And you sort of just clip the top of it off like that. And then it's just going to come right back up. It's a turf grass, so it's used to getting mowed. So I'm sure that one's going to be a pain. But... Overall, not horrible. Blackberry will stop after a year or five. Uh, nut sedge is always going to be a problem. Centipede is always going to be a problem because it's going to spread in from the alleys. Uh, blackberry will to a lesser degree, but it'll kind of just stay to the peripherals. And uh, I can always treat the blackberry with herbicide. The um, Bermuda grass is always going to come back. Nut sedge will get better over time, but it's never going to go away. Uh, betony will eventually go away. I think it should probably disappear after a season or two. So anyway, I'm get, gonna get back to pulling weeds, and I think I'm going to bust out the lawnmower and see if I can run it between the alleys a little bit just to see how well it works and whether or not it cuts my irrigation lines. So I'm gonna get back to work. And over here on the frost weed, we have Another caterpillar. I believe this is uh, some sort of moth. It looks incredibly familiar to me, and I'm just blanking on what it is. Maybe a salt marsh moth, like a really early instar. I don't know. I'll have it up here on the screen if I figure it out. But we have two pollinators using our garden so far. Uh, well, in addition to anything that stops by for nectar on the scant few things that are already flowering. And there's four. All weeded, good for another week or two or half a day. Like, this nut sedge, it's insane. I weeded this yesterday, and like, we got blackberry coming up underneath the drip line. We got more betony popping up. Now, I already pulled some of it, but, you know, there's already nut grass poking up after a day. You just can't control this stuff. Well, you can. It just takes too much effort. So, I'm thinking I might actually start repotting these guys like you saw how much I overwatered those yesterday and they're already they've already sucked up everything and I've started to dry out these are still nice and soggy but I'm thinking just because of how dense like the landscape coreopsis and the red Becky are um, I should probably just take those and plop them in there for now we have a, a chance just a chance for a whiff of rain so I think I'm gonna just throw them in there water them in and hope for the best because um, it seems like I'm getting decent enough uh, direct sow coverage. Uh, same goes with the sickle pod uh, as well as the uh, butterfly weeds that have come up. Um, I might take the butterfly weeds and stick them in a pot 
but I'm thinking about taking everything that's come up um, and just plopping it, plopping it on in there and uh, hoping for the best because uh, I have a feeling that this is all I'm going to get. So I think I'm going to get to that and uh, I'll give you a status update when I'm there. All right, we got four Gyardia plugs in. I stuck the one uh, butterfly weed from the peat moss pellet in there. Um, I put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sickle pods in here, so that should be plenty. And then way over yonder, put in five red beckia and what is that? Five lance leaf coreopsis. Actually, six Rodbeckia, five Landsleaf Coreopsis, two Carolina Indigos. I had one just starting to come up that I stuck in, and then one Guatemalan Indigo. And this is what we got left over here. So the only stuff I didn't put in the ground from the peat plugs was the Guatemalan Indigo, because I don't have any reason to with how well my germination uh, was from the Direxo. And these two, or actually three butterfly weeds, which... I think I'm gonna let them get a little bit bigger. I want this to dry out some. It's really hard taking stuff out of this seed tray when they're wet. So I'm gonna let this dry out a little bit more so I can poke them out. And I think I'm going to transplant these uh, just straight into like a pot of compost and uh, grow them separately out of here and we'll see how those regenerate. So they, those come back with a vengeance uh, after the monarch damage, then I don't have a reason to put any more in there, and I would much rather have those in a pot that I can take them and transplant them and put them someplace else where they'll do more good, say somewhere out here in the meadow or back at my house where I am in desperate need of butterfly weed. So that's the plan, and we're just going to leave these here, keep them topped off with water, and uh, see if we get any more germination out of them, but I am not expecting much. All right, so I just went ahead and did that. So I've got three butterfly weeds in pots, and we're going to see if they grow up nice and big and strong and tasty for all the monarchs, and hopefully they'll do great, and everything over there will do great, and I can take these home and use them in my garden. And i got the three indigos up here, and I also planted 12 Sea Island cotton seeds in the middle uh, because I'm just addicted to planting them things. So kind of interested to see how well the Sea Island cotton will do in a pot. I was tempted to put one over here, and then I thoroughly talk myself out of it. Well, not thoroughly, but I spent a lot of time talking myself out of it, so I compromised and stuck them in this pot, since I've got so much compost and the pot wasn't doing anything. And yeah, we got nothing left over here in the seed trays now, other than dirt and seeds. So we'll see if any of those come up. Um, not expecting anything else will. And if I don't see any more activity over there in the next two weeks, I'm gonna just take those and compost them and uh, then use those trays to grow my own vegetables because I am woefully behind on my own vegetable plot this year. But we made progress today and the monarch caterpillars are still doing good. Uh, butterfly weeds will hopefully be a growing. If I can get, you know, five of them in there, I'll be happy. And yeah, things are looking good. I think I might do one more thing today and I think I might go drive uh, out and pick up a Thalia dealbata to throw right there in the middle because I don't think those seeds I collected four years ago are still viable. So I'm gonna go try and dig one of those up before we get some rain and I can't get to the spot where they're growing. So we'll see about that. We'll see if I got time for that. I'll make an attempt. And just like that, we have a Thalia, just like snap on my fingers. I went and dug that up, dropped it in there. Um, they really, really like wet soil. They look a lot like cannas, uh, but hopefully they'll do well. That's why I've got the soaker hose basically bordering the thing on three sides so that I can make sure it stays wet all the time. So anyway, I just watered the snot out of it and uh, hopefully it'll survive. And uh, we already have a Brazilian skipper caterpillar in tow. So we'll see if uh, we have enough new growth, if this thing can stay alive long enough to feed that guy. And if not, he can always jump ship over to the cannas. So these are both host plants. That's why I put them so close together and why I even considered using cannas. So, here's hoping. Okay, we had an absolute deluge of a rainstorm. Looks to be about two inches from the rain gauge. Uh, nothing new's come up over here in the starter beds except for one little Carolina indigo. So I may go take him and stick him over in yonder pot. Um, 
those transplants all look to be doing pretty good. Um, may pull that guy out and replace him with a Carolina indigo. I'd rather have a Carolina indigo than, a, than three Guatemalans. Um, butterfly weeds are fine. Everything else is looking good. Everything's perked up. Lyre leaf sage is starting to bloom again. Let's see, has the hairy leaf cup put out any uh, new buds? It's starting to, it's trying to. Um, this might be one, I think it is. Yep, so they're starting, they're coming back. Joe Pye weed looks really good now. Ooh, Golden Mane Coreopsis is just about to bud right there. So that's nice. Yarrow is starting to bud too. Let's see, Chapula River Coreopsis is coming around. Look at them chunky boys. Ooh, baby. Tons of monarchs. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fat monarchs. They have not moved though. They're all over here. So, yeah. I wonder if any of them have gone off to pupate. I'm gonna say no. They're they're right about the stage where they would start pupating, but I think they still got another couple days in them. Let's see. Elliot's aster still looks good. Swamp sunflower is taken off like a weed. Heck yes, that's what I want to see. Uh, the sooner you see these guys growing, the better. Let's see. Obedient plant is turning around. This looks to be. Yeah, this is not an obedient plant. This I believe is a goldenrod um, which is a nice plant but we've got scads of it so I don't really want that so I think I'm going to yank this guy up before he gets any bigger and I can't get it out of here you know if you don't have you know four acres of the stuff literally right next to you that's a great plant same goes with that uh, spotted bee bomb over there but since I have piles of the stuff I don't really want it in here so I'm gonna pull that up real quick. Let me cut. All right, let's see. Liatris is coming along just fine. Self heal is, appears to be spreading. Stokisha's doing all right. Hasn't really grown, but it's doing okay. Uh, Spiderwort's getting ready to bloom. It appears to be growing a fair bit, at least some of them are. Let's see, Mistflower is coming back around. They really wanted that rain, apparently. Uh, let's see, Golden Alexander, these two still look a bit sketchy, but they have perked up. That one actually looks like it's going around for a second round of blooming, which is nice. Scarlet uh, Hibiscus is putting out growth. Gladiolus have come back around. They may actually bloom here in the next month. That would be nice. Let's see, Cannas are all grown up, putting out uh, some leaves. Uh, Thalia has not croaked yet. That rain was absolutely critical, and I'm glad we got it. And it looks like, if I can get this to fold over, our Brazilian skipper is getting big and chunky. It's, he's down in there. I don't think I can make it focus. Just barely. You might be able to see a little dark thing in there. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get some more of them over here. That would be nice. That's the whole reason I got them planted. They're not really that great of a nectar plant. Let's see, Gyardias are coming up. Well, these, these are the ones I transplanted. They are coming up. Put some height on them. The ones that have come up from Direxo aren't growing too quick. As uh, soon as they establish, they'll take off like a weed, hopefully. Uh, Indian grass is still just kind of hanging on there. I'm hoping this is the American wild carrot, not something else that fell in here. No, it looks like it. I can see true leaves starting down there and they look like them. Not seeing really any more of them though, but at least we have one patch, so I'll take it. Phlox is coming along nicely. It's in full bloom, not really spreading, but it is growing. Let's see, the butterfly weed is coming back out, it looks like. Uh, everything that got ate on. Uh, I do have aphids over here now, great. But it looks like everything that the uh, monarchs chewed on is putting out new growth, which is fantastic. They are not dead. So maybe we'll have a huge thing of butterfly weed over here unless the monarchs come back. I may have to build a screen for this just to keep the monarchs off. Oh, that is an interesting problem to have. 
I don't think I see any rabbit tobacco coming up, but that's not a super critical one for this year. We're already past the point where we should have um, American ladies, you know, hosting on stuff, so we're probably not going to see them this year. Maybe not until fall. Let's see, the sickle pod seems to be established well. They're putting on growth. Everything I transplanted seems to be well ahead of the stuff that's coming up from a direct sow. It's good. It's great. Good news all around. Um, others, well, I guess not really so much good news for the swamp milkweed because it's getting ate to death, but um, between the aphids and the monarchs. But hopefully uh, these monarchs will finish and, uh, oh God, they're going to lay eggs all over my butterfly weed, aren't they? Mm, fantastic. But anyway, uh, it's it's a it's weird mindset to have, grow, having a butterfly garden and being mad that there's butterflies in it because they're here too soon. Uh, I guess it's a good problem to have, except it's so dang hard to get this milkweed. But anyway, swamp milkweed should be fine. It'll come back around. And uh, yeah, we should have scads of monarchs around here, uh, unless these guys just take off and head north as soon as they uh, emerge. We'll see. But we're doing good. First rainstorm. Everything is coming around. Uh, only have two things blooming so far, I think. Three things. We've got the lyre leaf sage, the Ohio spiderwort, and the woodland phlox. Oh, and the golden alexander. But it was blooming when I put it in the ground, so that one didn't count. We'll, we'll count it anyway. It's four. We're about to have the gold main coreopsis. Um, might be past the time for the scarlet sage. Uh, appears to be it. Probably we'll get cannas later. I think those come up in summer. We'll see. I don't know, but things are looking great. So, yeah, I think that's establishment. I think everything is established now. Uh, I think there's no going back unless we have like a two-month drought. Hopefully we won't, but I don't think it's supposed to rain for another two weeks, so there's still time for things to go horribly awry. But I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, that's, the, that's the update for this uh, section of the... The story, the life of this pollinator garden. We have things established, stuff is growing, stuff is blooming. We got two different species of butterfly caterpillar here already, and uh, we may just have some more here soon. We have not had a flush of uh, black swallowtails yet, surprisingly, but we'll probably get one. I'm sure they'll be all over that golden Alexander and that American wild carrot if it comes up. But uh, till then, uh, you'll have to uh, stick around, stay tuned uh, for the next installment of this here in a couple weeks, month or so. We shall see. Uh, if you like what I'm doing out here, go down there, give the video a like, comment, tell me what other pollinator uh, host plants uh, you'd like me to put in here. And uh, if you want to see the rest of this story, you got to subscribe. So go down there, smash that subscribe button. And until next time, it's been Tom.